Hi, this is Rhett with TestingTheory.com, and today I want to talk to you about a common misconception that we hear in the world of testing. This misconception is one that plagues so many businesses and limits so many good tests because people just don't understand it. In its simplest form, the misconception is that less traffic equals less risk. And what I mean by this is you always hear people say, well, let's just start this test and we'll start it slowly with less traffic and then we'll ramp up later as we go. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this from a client or a business partner or someone I'm working with when I'm doing their testing. The reality is limiting the number of visitors does not change the risk. It doesn't change the outcome. It just takes longer to get the outcome. Now, people think they're doing this for a good reason. Hey, we can monitor feedback. We can see if there's really something wrong with this experience. And really it comes down to this. Do you want to run this variation and learn if it's good or not? If you do, then it doesn't matter what happens in the first few days, the first few hours. You need to have enough data to know if this experience is better than the control. Let me use a simple graph to illustrate this in principle. Suppose that you're going to run a test and suppose that you have perfect knowledge or you're at the end of the test and you can tell exactly how many positive outcomes there will be and you can tell exactly how many negative outcomes there will be. The number of positive outcomes is fixed. Again, imagine you have perfect knowledge or you're at the end of the test. The outcomes for positive will be what they are and the outcomes for negative will be what they are. If it's a winning test, you'll have more positive outcomes or more lift. If it's a losing test, your negative outcome will be bigger. In this example, the, the test just has a positive outcome, meaning there's a lift and it's a good test to run. It's a good variation. Now on my graph, you, you see two trends, two lines. You have one where you have 100% of the traffic and you have the other where you have 10% of traffic. And this could be any, for any reasons. Maybe you just target it to 10%. Maybe you limited it to a certain geography. Maybe you started slowly over time at 1% and then 2% and eventually you got it up to 10% but your net total was 10%. The two lines represent the amount of traffic in the test. Now, if you look at the x-axis at the bottom, you'll see the time, the time period of the test. So this was a four week window and you'll notice that after two weeks, the test with 100% of the traffic has enough to have reached that red line. The red line represents the threshold of data that you need to call the test a winner. Because it's a representative sample, it's a large enough sample, you have to have so much data in a test to be able to call it a winner. So after two weeks with 100% of the traffic, you have this variation that would reach that data threshold to where you can call it a winner. Now take the experience that only has 10% of total traffic. You can see that you don't reach that same data threshold until week four. This is the exact same variation, exact same test, exact same amount of change. The only difference here is the amount of traffic you're putting into it. This is the same with every test you run. If you choose to limit the, the number of visitors that enter the test, the only thing you do is you change the amount of time it takes to get the outcome. It does not change the positive or negative outcome that you'll get. You don't decrease your risk by having fewer people in the test. On the flip side, it doesn't increase your risk by having more people on the test. All it does is allow you to get to that data threshold sooner. And I have a number of videos on this, and the reason why is because I hear this over and over. There's so many people that say, well, let's exclude a certain state so that it's less risky for people. Let's start with a smaller number of visitors in the test so that we can make sure we're being safe and we can ramp it up over time. Those are just false ideas. They don't limit your risk. They don't make the test any better. All they do is make the test take longer. And as you've heard me say, your most important and most precious resource is your time. The, mo the resource you want to safeguard the most is your time. If I can get a test result in two weeks, the otherwise it would take four weeks if I limit the traffic, I can do twice as many tests in a year because I have more traffic in the test. One test every two weeks is two tests per month, 24 tests per year versus 12 tests per year. Now, if I can get double the tests, that potentially gets me double the outcomes if I'm testing with good strategy. If I get double the outcomes or increased revenue, that's a huge gain to the business. So the next time you hear someone who wants to limit the traffic, help them understand these principles that you need more traffic to reach the data threshold. And the only thing that limiting the traffic does is increase the time to get results. It doesn't change your, your total outcome of positive or negative experiences. It just changes the time it takes to get there. To use a simple analogy, it might be like taking a road trip. If my destination is trying to get to California, I can drive to California going 10 miles per hour, or I can go 75 miles per hour. The only difference is how long it takes me to get there. It doesn't change the destination, doesn't change, change the route I'm taking, doesn't change the car I'm driving in. It only changes how long it takes for me to get to my destination. The destination we're trying to reach with our tests is getting to that data threshold. The data threshold that we're trying to reach is good test results. We want sufficient data. We want consistent data, differentiated data, and we also want statistical confidence. The destination doesn't change, but how long it takes you to get there might change if you limit the traffic. So if you're going to California, 
please don't go 10 miles per hour. You'll get there much faster, you'll have a better trip, and you'll have more time to do more with your vacation if you go 75 miles per hour or more. And with your tests, please don't limit your visitors. Go as fast as you can by including as many visitors as possible. So thanks for joining me today about this common misconception that we see all the time in the world of A-B testing and conversion rate optimization. If you liked this video and you found it helpful, please give me that thumbs up so I know that you liked it. And you can also visit me at testingtheory.com where you can learn more about testing principles that will help you be a better tester to get better testing and more conversions with every test you do.